Hello everyone, Mr. Fawcett here, and we are back with another AP Calculus lesson. Uh, this lesson is actually an extension of our Riemann sums lesson. And I just wanted to quickly talk about the differences between left and right Riemann sums, and when the left Riemann sum is an over approximation, when it's an under approximation, when a right Riemann sum is an over approximation, or when it's an under, under approximation, and how we can figure that out based on what the graph looks like. So I have four graphs here. Uh, the top two, we're going to consider those the same. The bottom two, we're going to consider those the same. And we're going to do a left and a right Riemann approximation uh, over three subintervals for both of these. So on the left-hand sides, we're going to do a left and a left. Whoops. Left and a left. And we'll have a right and a right. I'm just going to sketch these out. I'm not going to be super precise. So if I do a left uh, Riemann sum approximation, it's going to look something like this. Okay, so let's think, is that an over approximation or is that an under approximation of the actual area underneath the curve or between the curve and the x-axis? Well, the actual area is this. So is the green an over or an under? Well, that's going to be an over, right? There's more area under the green rectangles there than there is under the actual curve. Let's look at the same function, but doing a right Riemann sum. It's going to look something like this. And this rectangle actually for the right Riemann sum actually has an area of zero. So clearly I think it's easy to see that this right Riemann sum is an under approximation because there is more area underneath the red function than there is underneath the green rectangles. Maybe it's not helpful if I shade that in. I'm not sure. Um, OK, let's look at the bottom two functions. So we're going to do our left one first. And we'll do our right. So let's think about it. Is the left an over or an under approximation? Well, that is an under. And on the right, that is clearly an over. So can we think about what were the differences between the two functions on top? So let's just make sure we split these up. What what was the sorry? Yeah, what, what was the difference between the function on top versus the function on the bottom? So why do we think we got, you know, the left Riemann sum being an over approximation for the top function versus an under an under approximation for the bottom? So just pause the video and think about that. And think about if you could say, you know, I could figure out whether it's going to be an over or an under approximation based on a certain characteristic about the function. Well, it turns out that the function on top was a decreasing function over that entire interval. Right? So the function was decreasing over the entire interval. For the bottom function, it was increasing over the entire interval. So something we may look at would be if it's a decreasing function, the left Riemann sum is going to be an over approximation, and the right's going to be an under. If it's an increasing function, the left may be an under approximation, where the right may be an over approximation. Now, all of these functions, the two that we looked at, were above the x-axis. So it would be good to see if this works out to be the same if the functions are below the x-axis. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to sketch some new functions for us, and then we'll do the same activity. All right, so I have, again, a decreasing function on top and an increasing function on the bottom. Uh, 
pause the video, see if you can sketch in the correct left and right Riemann sums and see if that conclusion holds here as it did up top, where, you know, for increasing functions, the left Riemann sum was an under approximation. For a decreasing function, it was an over approximation. Well, uh, on the top for our left Riemann sum, and we have to remember, these rectangles are going back towards the x-axis. So we're going to get something like this. Those are what our rectangles would look like. Now, it's a little bit tougher to think about here. Is the area underneath the green rectangles less than or greater than the actual area between the red curve and the x-axis. So the area under the green rectangles is less negative than the area underneath the red curve, which means that the area underneath the green rectangles is actually greater than the actual area underneath the red curve. So this here is an over approximation. Now, if we think back to our page before, right, when the function was decreasing, the left Riemann sum was also an over approximation. So this does hold true, right? Regardless of whether the function is above or below the x-axis, as long as it is decreasing, the left Riemann sum is going to be an over approximation. Let's look at the right Riemann sum. Right, so the area under the green rectangles is more negative than the area under the red curve. So this would be an under approximation. because the area underneath the green rectangles is less than, and I know it's hard because we're, we're having to kind of wrap our minds around, you know, positive versus negative areas, which we haven't really done in mathematics before. But the area underneath the green rectangles is more negative than the area underneath the red curve, which means that it's an under approximation. It's less than the actual area because it's more negative. And this, is the same thing that we found up above, right? So it, for decreasing functions, for left Riemann sums, they're always going to be over approximations. For right Riemann sums, they're always going to be under. Uh, let's see if it holds true for increasing functions. Oops. Our left Riemann sum would look like this. And that area underneath the green rectangles is going to be more negative than the area underneath the red curve. So this is an under approximation. Uh, for the right Riemann sum, the area underneath the green rectangles is less negative than the actual area underneath the red curve. So this is going to be an over approximation. So if you didn't really, you might need to go and listen to that and maybe think about it on your own uh, for the negative versions of these graphs, right, where they fall below the x-axis, because I think it is much more difficult to think about than when they are above. Uh, but the conclusions hold true regardless of where the graph is, whether it's above the x-axis or below the x-axis. So let's uh, summarize all of this. Two statements. If a function is increasing over an interval, then a left Riemann sum will be an under approximation. Oh, there was not enough space there, was there? Uh, and a right Riemann sum will be an over approximation. And if a function is decreasing over an interval, then the left Riemann sum will be an over approximation, and the right Riemann sum will be an under approximation. Um, 
you know, I have seen AP questions where they first ask you to do a re, uh, left or right Riemann sum, and then they ask you which one would be an overestimate or an underestimate and why. So you have to understand, you know, your justification would be based on whether the function is increasing or whether it's decreasing over that given interval. All right, uh, we are going to wrap the video up here. Again, just an extension of our Riemann sum lesson. As always, enjoy the rest of your day, and we will look forward to seeing you for our next lesson.